Hey guys, it's Amy at Zoe Beck and I'm going to do my weekly reading update for April 23rd, 2023. So I did quite a bit of reading this week, so that is fairly good. Um, it was kind of a quiet week at work. Um, I, I think it's because, um, you know, as I said, the weather is getting, well, not better. <laughs> it's fluctuating back and forth. This next week is supposed to be really nice, but you know, we still had some really cold days and stuff, but um, things are starting to run a little bit more, so more equipment needs to be worked on. So uh, it, got, it gets pretty quiet uh, in the shop when they get sent out on calls. So um, I did actually listen to some audiobooks this week, but I think that was, I was pushing it because I really wanted to, but my ear is still bothering me and my appointment is not until this, tu this, this Tuesday. So I'm hoping after that I could start listening to more audiobooks more often at work because sometimes it just gets boring. <laughs> I mean, I have stuff to do on the computer, but it's so quiet. <laughs> That'd be nice if I could listen to some stuff. Anyway, uh, beyond that, I don't think anything is going on. I don't know if there was. I don't know. Um, I will have linked below my announcement video for a Q&A that I'm going to do next week. Um, I'm going to do that instead of the weekly update on the Sunday. I'll move the update to Monday. Um, anyway, but, uh, so if you guys have any, uh, want to ask any questions or anything, uh, please put it on that video. Don't put it on this one. Um, I'm going to keep track of them on that one, um, so that I can compile the list, uh, to do that video on Sunday, which is my sixth year anniversary on, uh, YouTube. I uploaded my first video on, uh, April 30th, 2017. So I am doing a Q and A just as kind of those six year things. So if you guys want any questions, ask any questions. Again, I have reserved the right to decide which questions to answer, but, uh, you know, pretty much uh, anything easy, I'll, I'll answer. So if you want to do that, again, that'll be linked in the description box below, or you can go to my channel to find that video. It was my 800th video that I've uploaded in those six years. Pretty cool. So I think that's kind of it don't have anything else coming up the end of this week. Um, I'll have my um, TBR video coming up, but um, on Friday, I'm going down to my parents and we're going to go to a library book sale in Corvallis at the Benton County Fairgrounds for the Benton County um, Library System. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> so I will probably get more books this year, this month than I uh, planned, but it's library, you know, library book sale time. So um, we'll see how that goes. I'm going to try to be conservative, but when I get around my dad and I and books, we're not very good together. <laughs> we very much uh, help each other find books. Anyway, <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. So anyway, let's talk about the books that I finished the ones I'm in the middle of and what I think I might read in the next week. As you know, I am highly mood reading at this point. I um, try to get books in that I said I was going to read and then I just like I'm all over the place. I just keep picking up other stuff. So anyway, um, so the book, the audio, one of the audio books that I did finish this um, week on Monday was Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon. So I did do this on audio, um, which I can't remember the, um, the odd narrator's names. Sorry about that. It was, it was a good audio book that had nothing to do with it. Um, this is just not a favorite of mine. I DNF this series. I think I, I DNF this book, um, ebook form, uh, probably about a year Maybe a year and a half ago. I don't remember. It was something like that. It's been a while because um, I did try it because everybody was talking about it. And I just, there's, there was a certain scene of something was said or done that I was like, oh, I don't really <laughs> like that. So I stopped. I still didn't like that same scene um, when I came to this. I don't want to, you know, it, it's in the plot. The thing. I just didn't like it. I still don't like it anyway, but I got past it and I finished it out because um, again, work was pretty quiet on that day. So um, this is, you know, sci-fi romance, uh, very, uh, very sexy, very, uh, blue airlines. <laughs> These, uh, this follows Georgie, who is with a group of women who were kidnapped by aliens and then are, um, left on, um, this, n <laughs> this Hoth-like planet, I think Star Wars, uh, <laughs> so that they are left there because of some difficulties, um, with the ship and then, um, they have to figure out what to do next because they, 
they're just left there. So Georgie goes off trying to find help with what little um, supplies they have for keeping warm and she runs into, oh, I don't know how you say his name. It's Val something or, oh, it just went out of my head. I don't know, <laughs> the blue alien guy. And then they have a whole communication uh, issue and he um, feels like she is his, his is mate and then it kind of goes from there so this is a faded mates kind of situation with some of the sci-fi elements in here and um again very much these poor girls who are left on this planet and have to deal and um i did like the way this came around in the end i liked some of the sci science fiction part of this of the with the aliens and then technology and stuff um i mean there are some underlying hard things that happened in here too um which are hard so i mean again it's not it's not a, it's not all light and fluffy it's it's not i mean there's still a couple there's some themes in there and stuff and so um i think overall it was good it was okay you know like it's it's nothing that i want to revisit um but i finished the first book so that was that was a big deal for me so i did um because i wasn't sure that was going to happen because I DNF'd it, um, as I said, I think over a year ago, I think maybe a year and a half ago. I'm not quite sure. It was a while ago. It was quite a while ago that I tried it before. So, um, because again, it was quiet and I was kind of craving another audiobook, but I wanted it to be a reread. And I was thinking about this book after I finished um, Alec McKenzie's Art of Seduction last week. So I picked up the seduction or yeah. I think it was the seduction word <laughs> that made me remember the other book, which was the D seduction of Elliot McBride, um, by Jennifer Ashley. So this is book five in the Mackenzie McBride series. Um, the one I just referenced the Alec McKenzie's art of seduction was number nine. So I kind of went back cause this is one of my favorites in the series and I hadn't read it, reread it in a while. And so we're following Elliot. It's the 18, I think it's the nineties. 1890s and he has just come back from oh 84 sorry 1884 so he has just come back from um india and he has gone to one of his childhood uh his sister's childhood friend um juliana's wedding he has come and uh she gets jilted at the altar her her uh betrothed um uh ran off <laughs> with his piano teacher and so she is all dressed up ready for the wedding and uh she, um she's you know pretty devastated that this has happened even though it was just a it was a fair match but not like great and everything as she asks him to that she said well you wouldn't want to marry me would you and he says yes and so then it's their whirlwind marriage of you know they were knew each other as young people and then he went off and to india and a lot of things happened while he was there and he has a lot of um ptsd and other things that happened um because of some horrible things that happened to him there so this is one of the more um of the books in the series has more i think more depth to it because it does talk about um ptsd and um some horrible things that happened while he was in india um and so I liked, I liked that. And it had shows the culture of his, uh, his, uh, the people he brought with him, uh, from India, some, um, um, and so, so it's, it has this, but it also has a mystery. I guess I'm trying to say is that there's a lot of things to this. It's not just a, a historical romance by these two people who are kind of, uh, just get married kind of on a sound, feels like a whim, even though they both liked each other when they were younger and always hoped that it would happen between them. But again, he went off and, um, she was left behind. So there's a lot of stuff in there, but there's also a lot of other stuff. I mean, there's a lot of, of things in here. I just think it's a fun one. It's not, again, not a perfect book, but it's still like one of my favorites in the series. Um, and I just loved, um, re-listening to it. I believe Angela Daw did that one. So, um, I got the audiobook from the library, but again, I've read it physically many, many times. So it's just fun to listen to it on audio. Um, I then, um, started a new manga series. I just, uh, saw that my library had several of these. So Love to Kill, Love of Kill, Volume 1 by Fee. This is translated. Um, I actually don't know. By Ruth Summers. Hmm, I didn't. I don't know if it's 
I mean, I figured it is from J Japanese. It looks Japanese. It's just, I don't know this, this one as well. So anyway, or maybe it's not. I don't know. I'll have to look more into that. I guess I just assumed because it has a thing in the back saying Japanese. But anyway, um, it doesn't say what it's translated from. I've just assumed it was. Um, but this is following two uh, bounty hunters or assassins. And one of them, the guy is like very notorious and stuff, but he is crushing on the other one. And she's just like, oh my gosh, get away from me kind of thing. And it's just, she gets kind of pulled into um, things that, um, like he's been trying to help her out because she's new kind of to the industry, even though she's done it things before she's spouting on her but and he's as i said he's more of an assassin and it's just it's kind of funny and cute in some ways but there's all this blood and violence because <laughs> they're assassins so um i only read the first uh section and it ended at a really interesting point of something that happened so i do want to continue on um, my library only has the first four and i think it it goes on from there but i thought i'd at least try it and at least i like that one so that was fun it was just so um, I'm hoping I'll continue on with that here this next week. Um, what was it? I, where's my, oh, man. you know what? When I think I have everything put together and I don't, it's just ridiculous. No, I, I don't. Um, okay. Let's cancel really quickly. Uh, house of... Oh, it's probably not right. It's probably not going to pop up. Oh, there it is. I don't know where my picture went. So I um, also got, I got from the library I read next was A House with Good Bones by T. Kingfisher. So this one um, was due this week. So I thought I better read it. And I knew I was going to go to the library pick up, to pick up a few of the books that I got. So I wanted to read it before, because because there were already people waiting for it. And I didn't, I've already held, had it for two weeks. So I thought, you know, I better just read this. So I read this really um, in the middle of the week. T. Kingfisher and I are kind of like half and half. There's some things I really like by her and other stuff I don't really like. This one I really liked. So overall, this was a good read. Um, I don't think it was perfect in any way, but we're following, which, because I don't have the book, I can't remember her name right now. It's not coming to me. Anyway, but uh, she um, is told by, is, she's kind of at loose ends because of her job as an archaeologist and etym et etymologist. Is that with what the bugs <laughs> Anyway, she uh, is kind of at loose ends because the dig she was on uh, is gets postponed or something happens that she has to leave. And so she comes to her mom's house in North Carolina because her brother said that there's something weird going on, but he didn't want to tell her exactly what. So she goes to kind of see what happens. And the first thing she notices is that things in the house have changed since the last time she was there. Uh, the All the bright... Uh, really pretty colors have been painted over into kind of a beige white or you know into a kind of boring color and some of the decorations have changed also back to when the house was owned by the main character's grandmother or her her, her mother's mother so there's this kind of family history of things going on here and something with the house going on and then some weird things start happening and I like it that has something to do with bugs because she has, you know, does some dogs, there, some with bugs. There's a funny little neighborhood. It's like a little funny little street. Uh, the, you know, the guy across the street who's watching everybody with his binoculars. There's the woman at the end of the street who is um, rehabilitating uh, 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 turkey vultures. I think that's what, yeah, or the vultures of some sort. <laughs> Sorry, black vultures, I think. Anyway, so, and there's like a carrot, the one of the, like she has one that's, um, that has a wing damage so that it's a pet it is just so weird anyway and then there's the the handyman who is, is is hanging around or helping out with her mom with stuff around the house and it's just this great cast of characters um and then again there's all this weird stuff happening in the house so there's something going on we don't know um there's something the mother is acting differently and um, so it's, would say things that doesn't make any sense or would say, oh, no, that didn't happen or, you know, no, it wasn't like that. And it's kind of throwing her um, daughter kind of into a, I was going, what is going on? So it's a really cute, I, or not cute. It's a really uh, creepy mystery is the word I'm looking for. This was creepy. There's a couple times I was a little creeped out by what I was like, oh, I wouldn't want that to happen. Um, 
so I thought it was fun um, overall. It was a fast read because it's not very, it was just over like 230 pages. Um, and it was just, it, it didn't go the way I thought it would. I mean, it, there's a few things I might have guessed at, but not, not the way it went. It was really weird. Um, it has some weird kind of twist to it that I, I don't think you expect when you go into it. So overall, I think it was a good one. Um, it's not, um, it's not my favorite of hers, you know, as I said, like, I think, I think, um, I don't know if, well, I like the hollow places and what moves the dead so far better, but this was, this was still good. Like it wasn't bad. Um, I did have some problems with, uh, denials. She, um, <laughs> I get that she's a scientist, but her denials went on a little too long for me, considering everything that she had already experienced. So in the middle was kind of, I had a little problem with that, but I think overall, um, it was still a good book, and I, I think if you like T. King, uh, uh, T. Kingfisher, I think you would probably like this one if you like her spooky, her spooky stuff. So, I did like that. All right, at least enough that, um, <laughs> that I read it anyway. So, um, let's see. Here. And then one of the books I picked up from the library was the second book in the Ghost Seer series by Robin D. Owens. So again, I read Ghost Seer last week and it was one of my books that I had done a try a chapter on and decided to keep so I finally read that and I decided to continue on um, and see how I felt about the series this is still not a this is like not a favorite series this is just a, a it's gonna be hopefully fun just to read through it uh we're following um Claire who um on the death of her great aunt suddenly has psychic powers and can see um ghosts and they can talk to her and she gets a ghost dog named Enzo and who's really awesome <laughs> I love Enzo and uh she is in the first book she is kind of forced to confront the fact that she did not want to believe her great aunt was you know could talk to ghosts and things and she had kind of tried to be very strict with herself and be very you know reality based and everything and then everything gets thrown out the window and then she also meets Zach who is an ex-cop who had an accident or was shot on the job and is now disabled and he is kind of trying to figure find his own way after his injury and he has his own little talent as well but he tries to deny that any of that stuff is real so um this is definitely a paranormal romance not an urban fantasy I was when I went into it, I was hoping for an urban fantasy. So this is not a slow burn. They, uh, this, this is definitely, uh, heavy on the romance. There is a, a lot in, um, uh, you know, they're getting closer and, uh, they're not shy about their attraction to each other from the first book on. So, um, overall this was fun. This one, um, again, she has her, the ghosts that she can see are mostly, um, um, in the Old West era. So um, again, she's in Denver. So there's a lot of that in the area around. So she is called out to a mansion or a, a billionaire's ranch where he has moved an Old West town to onto his property to kind of make it into uh, an, a, an attraction. And he's put a lot of money into this, but there is a ghost that keeps leaving bones in people's beds. And <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of funny that part but there was a lot of stuff in here that I didn't expect to happen um there was some mystery of something somebody was trying to make her not talk to the ghost or was worried about what she'd hear from him so there was um a lot of suspense in here of uh, and stuff going on so I liked it I, again it's not gonna be a favorite if anyway but it was just a fun it was a fun um rom um uh, paranormal romance and so um I do have the third one I ha I'm on the list, so whoever has it, I'll get it after them. The third one, the fourth and the fifth one, I'm having a harder time finding them. I can't find them used online yet. And I might, I'm going to try the local used bookstores here in the next couple weeks to see if I can find those two books. I don't know what I'm going to do. I can get them on audio uh, from Audible, but they're both like 12 bucks. <laughs> and so I'm like, do I want to spend 12 bucks? I don't know. I haven't decided if I'm going to be that committed to finishing the series, if it's going to cost me that much money. I'm not sure. So, but I'm for sure going to read book number three once I get it from the library and at least read that. The last two books, I just, I don't know. I, I'd hate to leave that book, that series undone, but I also, I don't know if I want to pay that much for an audiobook. Um, I mean, again, if I can find them used, I just didn't find them at 
the first time I looked. So I might look again. So we'll see. Maybe check some of the other websites uh, with used books. I don't know. We'll see. Um, let's see. I finished that on Thursday. And then the other library book I picked up was The Warden by Daniel M. Ford. So this is the first book in a series. I'm hoping it's only like a duology because <laughs> of the way this worked. Uh, just It just feels like it should only be a duology. But it isn't, I can't find any anything that says if this is going to be longer than just two books, but I guess I'll find out. Anyway, so this is the first book. It just came out this last week. Um, I have been wanting, this is like one of my highly anticipated books from an author I had not read before that I wanted to read because this has been, uh, is a fantasy that is been um, said to be Twin Peaks uh, with wizards. So of course you're talking about two things I just adore. I love Twin Peaks and I would, and I, I like wizards, you know, I like magic and stuff like that. Um, I don't quite think it's quite Twin Peaks. I would more say that this is more small town uh, with wizards. Um, so what we're, we're following, um, oh, her name is so, I don't know how to say her name. A, Alias, 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 something like that. She uh, is a warden and she has just graduated and, sent, and she's being sent on her first mission. She's sent to Lone Pine, I believe is the name, yes. Uh, so there's this little town up north away from all the big cities. And she is a city girl. She is um, the last, the I think the youngest daughter of a count. So she is, you know, in the nobility kind of thing. So, but she has um, decided to become a warden um, and has studied for the last five years. And... Um, and again, this is her first assignment. So she is sent out there. They had asked for one because they hadn't had uh, a warden in, in a long time. So it's kind of like their um, wizard, their police officer, their judge and jury, or their judge. You know, they're kind of, it's kind of a role in one. Kind of think like, you know, <laughs> like kind of like a sheriff. But then again, there's magical powers. And she helps out with other things and stuff too. So it's her, it's almost, it's not quite a coming of age even though she is very, she's fairly young and this is new, um, you know, she's in this new position and she's going into this not knowing what she's doing. Anyway, but, um, what am I trying to say? Um, so, but there's a lot of little mysteries. There's a lot of her meeting the town folk, which I, I see where the Twin Peaks thing is kind of, it just wasn't creepy enough or weird enough. There was a lot of, there are some interesting little side uh, quest in here, like there's little things that are happening. There's, um, uh, you know, there is a, there is a, 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 like a little road trip in here <laughs> as I try to find somebody. Uh, so, and it's really good. I mean, I think it's, I, I really enjoyed this overall. It was not a perfect book to me. I think that there was a lot missing, uh, that could have been expanded. It is only 300 pages. And, um, as much as I love a short, um, fantasy. I think that's great that way. I just felt like there was so much more he could have done with making it more weird in Twin Peaks. So I don't know if he ever called it that or that it's just the publisher's thing. So I'm not, I'm not blaming the author. I'm just saying I would not say this, this was Twin Peaks in any way. <laughs> I would just say this was small town, um, with wizards. Um, and there is weirdness and there is, but it's just, then there's some, and again, there is some weird, there are some weird things going on and it definitely, um, what the ending really opens it to what's going to happen next, which could get more creepier uh, in the second book, which comes out in a year. So <laughs> I have to wait a year for the, the sequel. I will continue on. This is not a series I'm going to give up on or anything. It's just, um, I'm sad that it's going to be another year before <laughs> that book comes out because it has the date already of like end of April of next year. And I think it's called Necrobone. So she is, as I said, she has, uh, necromancy is one of her disciplines uh, but it's but it's interesting because it's necromancy in a different way than what I've seen in like stuff like Gideon the Ninth and some other ones that talk about necromancy um it's very interesting they look at it as a way to um not be um you know bringing up the dead and everything it's more it's more connected they use it more to connections as to be uh to help people get better and to be more of a doctor and a surgeon using that knowledge is really a really interesting twist that way. I like that. And there's a lot, as I said, there's a lot of stuff in here. There's a couple of, of the mysteries, as I said, I called it pretty early, but I still, I still liked it. It was just fun. 
So, um, I mean, again, if it's, if you like, you know, a small town and the, a new sheriff in town kind of thing, I think you'll like this, uh, fantasy. It has, again, a lot of the magic and stuff. And I think it, it does have good world building that way. I'm interested to see more of it. I just think it was a little short and could have, there could have been more details to make it more Twin Peaks, but it's not, I mean, again, it's fine the way it is. I just, again, I, I enjoyed it. I'm glad I read it again. It, it just wasn't exactly what I wanted. But it was it was still a fun ride. Does that make does that make any sense? I don't know. So the other the other book that I partially read this week was A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. I'm about halfway through. I, this was it, this is one of those weird books where I picked it up because I was trying to pick up books that I had bought from Barnes and Noble uh, so far this year. I've you know been trying to go once a month and pick up a book and get one buy one get one half off. So I have quite a few of them. And this is one of the ones I picked up in January. And I thought, well, you know, I should really read this because the second book the of the duology is out. And I, I might want to get that from the library to finish out the series. So I thought, well, I should read the first book. So um, this is following um, Jack, who is a bard who was sent to the mainland um, when he was a kid. And then um, this is like 12 years later, he is called back uh, to help find some missing uh uh, some missing girls who have gone missing, uh, young girls. And so she, he comes back and he, um, starts help working with his arch nemesis from when he was a kid who is, she is the, um, heir to the, to, um, their country. And again, it's an island. So the island is split in half. There is the West side, which is a certain, uh, which is the enemy and then their side which is the east side and it's they're very two different brands and there's all this magic and lore that goes along with what why they're split and what happened and um um there's a lot of cool magic things in here um and and then it's also very much a community book of you know meeting the people that he left behind and the things that when he come back to and what he he um how things have changed and people have grown and stuff so um Anyway, so, but the problem with this book, it's not, I really, I like the main, I like the characters a lot. Jack, I just want to cuddle him up and just kind of save him because I feel so bad for him <laughs> of some of the things he's gone through. Um, I'm starting to like um, Adaria, I think is how her name is said, um, better when we got closer to the middle of certain things that are happening. So again, I, I do like her a little better. At first, I was not so sure. Um, I liked, um, I like one of the other guys is Torin and Sidra. And there's, a, there's a quite a few other characters that we get. So we get a lot of POVs. We're seeing a lot from the, the east side of the island and what's going on. And then again, these girls are going missing. And um, it's, they're trying to figure out what it is. And they're, they, um, have to deal with the spirits of and um of the of the land and there's and there's you know water spirits and there is you know air and earth and fire and so there's it's been really interesting learning their lore and stuff and so again I'm only halfway but again it was this book was one of those ones where I could just set it down and walk away it's that's not good but it's also it's not a bad book it's just I am easily able to set this down to read other books because I started this on Sunday and got 90 some pages in and then I put it down to read um those audiobooks and then my library book you know a house of good bones before I came back and read a little bit more and then I put it down again when I got the warden and the ghost layer so it's you know I'm hoping this week to finish this one out and decide if I want to get the next book get the second book a fire endless I think that's what it is. I don't know, something like that uh, from the library because it's out in hardback, so I'm I wouldn't buy it. But we'll see. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't buy it yet <laughs> until it's paperback. So I want to see if I like this enough to continue on or not. So, but I need to finish it. So overall, I'm enjoying it. I just it's I'm finding it very easy to set down, which is not a good thing. So um, then we're just real quick. What I think I'm going to read in the next week, I do have the next. Um, so the three volumes of um, Love to Kill, Love of Kill. So hopefully I will, hold on, there we go. So I have these, these are what my library had. They had them all there. So I just got them all at the same time. So I do want to continue on. I just, the last couple of days I was trying to get the warden done so I didn't read any, but I will try to read these three over the next week. Um, 
as I said, they're assassins and one of them really likes the other one. The other one's like, I don't know what to do with you. Get away from me. Um, then I have um, other books that I, I might read. As I said, I might get back to the way of Kings, but I'm just not sure if I'm feeling this right now. So, you know, that just might be later. Um, I might pick up another, like a paranormal, but more romance with Go Hex Yourself, which I think it has to do with, um, her name is Reggie. And I think she has to, um, work with another wizard or something and, or another, uh, another witch or something and it not going well. I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember anymore. I also have a couple, I have a fantasy that I might read. I might read God Killer by uh, Hannah Kenner. So I don't know about that. I might try to get to The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent because I keep hearing about this fantasy romance in her other series. And I want to try one to see if I like uh, her writing. So I might read that. <laughs> or I might pick up the particular, or the particular, per peculiarities sorry <laughs> by david list because this just sounds weird <laughs> with a guy who i think his family works in a bank owns a bank and he and then something uh starts going wrong his friend turns up dead and then something's happening in the fog of london i don't know but <laughs> it just seems weird and it's, i've been wanting to get to that so i might read that i don't know we'll see or i might pick up something else completely um I'm waiting. I don't know what, what day it was supposed to come out. I'm waiting for my hold of In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Klune. So I could pick up that if it comes in from the library. I don't know if it was last week or this week it comes out. But, you know, as I said, I'm number two on the list. So, and they've bought a lot of copies. So I should get mine pretty soon. So whenever, I don't remember when the due date or the the uh, release date was for that. But it should be soon. So that's the only other library book I was kind of waiting for other than the third book in the Ghost Seer series. So I think that's it. Really, really quick. We're just going to go through here. I um, started the Ice Planet Barbarians, which I should mention, which I totally forgot. I'll come back to this in a second. Um, I did uh, continue. No, I did a reread with the seduction of Ellie McBride. Um, I don't get to count a house of good bones for anything. Um, Ghost Slayer was a continue. And The Warden is a first book. So, um, I did forget. I do have a book that is, might be DNF'd. <laughs> and I did forget. Let me just seriously. Uh. So I did start Barbarian Alien by Ruby Dixon. Also on audio from my library. And I got about 14, 15% of the way through. And I'm just not sure. So I know a lot of people say the first book isn't as good <laughs> as the rest of the books but I'm already having trouble with this with a lot of the tropes in here and it could just be because it's more kidnapping than the last one was and I just this whole mate thing and wanting to get them pregnant kind of thing just kind of bothers me a lot so I might be DNFing Barbarian Alien and just sticking with the fact that I started Ice Planet Barbarians but I might not continue so I don't know I do still have the audiobook from the library for a couple weeks so once my ear gets cleared up, if I feel like one day I want to just kind of listen to it and get through it, we'll see. I'm just not think. I'm really not thinking this is a series for me, but I did want to mention that. I did kind of forget. I was going to say that. Anyway, so that's it. So there's Cooper. I do have Truman somewhere, but he's not here right now. So that is it. Um, anything going on with you guys? Um, any books that you're reading that are really good? I... As I said, I'm mood reading right now, so hopefully I'll finish A River Enchanted here, you know, in the next couple days, and then I'll pick something else, or I'll get back to The Way of Kings. I don't know what I'm going to do. I just, I'm, I'm in a weird reading mood, and I'm just kind of letting it go. So, again, I will have um, my announcement video for the Q&A listed, uh, or linked down below, so that, in the description box, so that you could click on that and ask any questions there. Um... I will have my TBR out later this week and then next Sunday will be my Q&A and then um, I will do my weekly update on the Monday. So that's it. I um, hope you guys are doing well. Um, yeah, we'll see how, <laughs> how things go. So I will talk to you guys later. Bye.